Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Very bad, yes? All right, if I get lazy, I'll pick up a microphone. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's actually a tight end, too. It's a Jason Cook did do that. Okay, hi. Hey. Hello. <laughs> okay, hi, my name is Eric Vale, and you're at my panel. Eric Vale. Hi, hi Eric Vale. <laughs> Huge fan. I don't know, maybe you're in the wrong panel. Oh, this is Oh, yeah, okay, hold on. Like, so, what's the name of this panel? I don't even know what. Uh, Eric? Oh, Eric. Oh, no. Oh, talk about stuff. Oh, talks about stuff. Stop. Yeah. Well, that's the easiest panel. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I always like to start off by figuring out who in this room does not know me or have a frame of reference for who I am or what I do. I have no frame of reference for what you do. Yes. You really don't. It's not really. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> so, everyone knows usually there's a couple of people, and those are my favorite people because they just basically try to. They're just basically you're trying to hook up. <laughs> There's usually one person who's like, oh, I don't know, and they're with somebody that they've been hitting on for a <laughs> But I just came here because she said we should. So uh, <laughs> that's not happening today, so that's interesting. Um, so as you know, I'm right, oh, sorry, what? I said it almost did. I said my husband's somewhere else. Oh, who is your husband? But, yeah, Don't tell that story. <laughs> So my name's Eric Vale, I'm a voice actor, I uh, do a lot of anime, and I do other stuff. I'm an actor at first, so it means I perform wherever anybody uh, pays me to perform. That's <laughs> part of the gig of being an actor. It's fun, I like it, it's a huge, huge pain in my ass, uh, <laughs> and I adore it. So it's basically like children. If you have children, any of you have children, right? Show of hands, yeah, so they're a huge pain in your ass if you love them, it's just like my job. Uh, but I do love it. I get to travel. I get to go to places I love, like here. And uh, and then sometimes I find myself in the middle of a week with nothing to do. I, I get surprise days off on like Tuesday or something if I didn't have any work that day. But while uh, you guys know me from all my anime work, like Dragon Ball Z and One Piece and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, Especially when being an actor is my job, so I'm hustling all the time. I'm auditioning every day. I auditioned yesterday at the airport before I came. <laughs> <laughs> it did not sound good. Uh, so I probably won't book that job. But a lot of voiceover, a lot of on-camera stuff. Usually, usually I have a full beard, and I love my full beard so much. And the reason I look like a Miami Vice extra is because uh, last week, a couple weeks ago, I got cast in an on-camera job where they wanted me to shave. So I had to shave. And then I showed up, and they're like, why'd you shave? Uh, that's what I always tell people. Like, that you don't want to see what's under here. Let's so just cover that up and make it look man. And then, so, okay. so this is the Eric Bale Talks About Oh, hey, man, that's fine. Um, uh, the Eric Vale Talks About Stuff panel, which means I talk about stuff. Now, we're going to open it up to a Q&A pretty quickly here because, you know, it's Friday morning and I'm tired. Um, <laughs> but being that it's a Talk About Stuff panel, I'll answer questions about anything. It doesn't have to be anime related. It can be just whatever pops into your head if you care to know what my opinion is on something. I'm, well, I'll offer. Uh, also, I always like to say that I just blatantly stole this panel from Jerry Jewell about seven years ago. <laughs> I saw, I walked in on his panel, I saw him doing that, and I'm like, I want to do that. <laughs> so, uh, I stole it. Anyway, all right, so I'm assuming people have questions. Is that true? This guy does. Mm -hmm. Also, oh, real quick, I can't see most of because I'm not wearing my glasses, I will see them on periodically. So if I go, yes, sir, and you're uh, a woman, uh, that's I'm not trying to be offensive. I just, I just can't tell. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Um, <laughs> what is your What is your favorite part about voicing Sanji? Oh, uh, my favorite part about voicing Sanji is when the session is over. <laughs> <laughs> Incredibly difficult 
character to portray. Now, that wasn't always the case. My, and truthfully speaking, my favorite thing about voicing Sanji is I, I'm a cook myself, and so I really enjoy playing a character whose uh, whole life is about cooking. I, I like that. I can identify. Um, but the thing about Sanji is that he started off kind of like Mr. Cool, and then as the episodes went on and on, he started to become a nice one. <laughs> his, his energy level increased over time, and he ended up screaming a lot of his lines. So, um, people say, oh gosh, working on Dragon Ball Z must be really hard for all those power-ups. Power-ups are easy. If you're just screaming, you're just, ah, <laughs> that's, that's easy. But doing that, pushing that amount of energy and air through your body and having to convince through a performance and hit the dialogue is exhausting. So after a while, um, once the Sanji session is over, I, I go home and, and take a nap. Um, <laughs> I usually make it in my back door and my couch is right there. I usually make it to there and then lay down. And I don't care who's on the couch, they move. <laughs> Bad cat, kid, whatever. Okay, who else has a question? Yes? Um, what is your favorite anime to voice act, and, and how did you get started doing it? Uh, my favorite anime to voice act is, uh, well, was uh, Desert Punk. I had the most fun doing that. <laughs> most people do this. Like, when I say Desert Punk, this is usually what happens. <laughs> so I appreciate the response. Uh, Desert Punk was a blast. It is a, it, if you haven't seen it, it is, it's like somebody crossed Mad Max with Porky's. Uh, <laughs> and it's a blast. It is an absolute blast. It's fun to watch. It's fun to work on. I worked with some really awesome people and, and it, was a, it was a blast. So that one, uh, as far as how I got started, well, I'm an actor and I auditioned. So it's kind of a boring story, but I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, there's a lot more to it than that, but I have been acting my whole life. Uh, I grew up in Texas, I still live in Texas, so I'm a Texas boy, and let's, let's, let's have a little contest here real fast. So, what do you guys know about Texas? I don't care if it's stereotypes. Guns! <laughs> Guns! 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 Barbecue? Gabriel Singh. Everything's big. That's it. Young, young woman. Listen to that. Cheap real estate. Shane <laughs> Ryan, guys. Anybody over here? It's hot. It's hot. Oh, come on. Houston. <laughs> Fair. To you? Football. <laughs> the longest running okay. anime. Friday Night Lights is based on a book that is true. The, the movie and the TV series, Friday Night Lights is no joke, guys. If you live in Texas and you are a young man, you play football. <laughs> Unless you're me. <laughs> so my father went to Texas A&M University and he played on the football team during the Golden Era. Now, that's Kind of, if y'all, and I don't know much about sports, but if you do know anything about sports, that's like playing on the same team with, say, like a Mickey Man or something, right? My father is weirdly famous. I mean, you don't know who he is, but everywhere we go, somebody goes, Chris Johnson! Like, he's a superhero, you know? We have been in different states in restaurants, and people have found him. <laughs> Chris Johnson? Yeah. And my dad's super cool, real easygoing guy, um, but he's a football guy, you know? He grew up playing football. He went to AM during their golden age and played football for four years and blew his knee and managed the team for the final year. And so all my baby pictures have me holding football <laughs> <laughs> and baseball and soccer balls and just. There's lots of balls in my youth, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, when I was 10 years old, because it was hot, 
in Texas. And because I'm terrible at sports and know nothing about it, uh, I set my dad down at the kitchen table and, and I'm like, you know, Dad, I want to talk to you. You know, little Eric. And he, he goes, oh, okay. He sat down. And I go, I hate sports. I hate it. Please don't ever make me play another sport ever. I'm terrible at it, and I don't have any fun at all. And my dad looked at me like I threw a third arm out of my head. And he was like, oh, all right. Okay, well, you want to do sports if you don't want to. So I, uh, I stopped, and then he was like, well, what do you want to do? Well, I want to be an actor. <laughs> okay, good, good, good luck with that. <laughs> None of my family ever took theater classes, right? Except my grandfather, my dad's dad, who actually went out to California and wrote for television in his youth. And then my dad's brother did the exact same thing. And no one ever told me this. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, I feel so awkward and strange, and everyone likes football and sports, and I hate it, and I just want to pretend to be somebody else and put on costumes. <laughs> and then finally I got older. Like, oh, that's a that's a real thing, you know. That's a, that's an option. So uh, when I was twelve, and I could finally take a course, I did it. I took theater, and this is Prince. Oh, you're gonna love this part. <laughs> this, this is a longer story I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> uh, so Mrs. Prince, my theater teacher, I came in, and she and I'm, she's like, you know, most kids take theater because it ain't shop and it ain't art. So we take theater, because, you know, how hard can that be to stand there saying things? And I was the only kid who really wanted to do it. And Mrs. Prince asked me, she goes, do you really want to be an actor? And I said, yes. She goes, then you can't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> because I grew up in Beaumont, Texas, and so when I was a little kid, I sounded like this, and this is not a joke. <laughs> so, you go ahead, you put a few cocktails in me, and guess what I start sounding like? That's right, the guy who grew up in Beaumont, Texas. <laughs> so, Mrs. Prince said to me, you can't sound like that. She put me through some speech therapy to get rid of my accent and give me a Midwestern dialect, which I have now. I had to practice for a very, very long time. But now it's my natural speaking voice. Except I just said speaking voice. <laughs> It slips in and out. Uh, and then um, I took theater in, in uh, high school, theater in college, took a bunch of classes, performed in plays everywhere that I could, everywhere I could act, I did it. Then I got an agent, then I uh, started getting more professional auditions, and there you go. And I eventually got an audition at Funimation. I actually had auditioned there a few times before I was cast as Trunks. That was my first role. Um, I was also the first actor who ever brought a headshot and resume into the studio. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, let's see. Uh, oh, and uh, just to, to firm up the situation with my father, when I was in ninth grade, he was finally able to see me perform. You know, he'd seen me do my band stuff as I was in band. I played the trombone. I was really happy. But he saw me do that. He saw me do artistic stuff. He saw me play a bunch of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and, you know, listen to heavy metal music, and um, my father was probably like, what's happening? <laughs> and then in ninth grade, he came to see me in my first play. I was in the bad scene. I played the kid's father. And afterwards, he comes up to me and he goes, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're way better at this than you are. <laughs> <laughs> you should definitely do this. And, uh, and is and still the biggest supporter, probably, that I know. Uh, so, yeah, he's so bad. Uh, but, uh, okay, so that's that story. Who else? Yes, yeah. So did your dad watch the shows that you voiced for? My dad watches, does not watch the shows that I voice for. My dad watches them to show off. So, <laughs> he, he puts them on when my nieces and nephews are over and brags to them, because they don't really watch this stuff. Guess what all my nieces and nephews do? Fortnite. 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 Football. Football. <laughs> Football. <laughs> and Fortnite. <yeah. laughs>
I do. Can you do like a little bit of dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm not a monkey. There's no coin slot. Is it me or is, is there some sort of thing happening right now here at this convention where people are taking jokes? Like, I've run into quite, I've dropped a few jokes at people, and people, this one guy earlier, man, I was, who was an opening ceremony? One person. <laughs> <laughs> so, a few people, so opening ceremonies, they brought a ton of people up on stage, and I'm waiting backstage forever to get up there. And then they said, uh, this woman came over to me, and she's like, you're Eric Bell? And yes, I am. And she goes, okay, well, you're going to be there. You're going to be after Kate. So get on up there. And I was like, okay. So I stood up here, and she's right behind me. And I was like, all right. Let's go. And then, then the person on stage goes, okay, next up we have Justin Cook. Mm. And I'm Damn. Like, oh, okay, Justin, go, go. So Justin comes up there. And I turn around to this woman and I go, you lied to me. <laughs> How dare you? And she, so, she was so funny. She's like, I'm so sorry. I just I didn't know what I was doing. So we were having a little back and forth. And this guy next to her goes, yeah, well, she maybe just had the wrong form up on stage and I went to the And I looked at him, I'm like, dude, dude. Right on. I was just joking, man. I was just joking. And he's like, he's like, yeah, well, maybe I just come from a different area of production than you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, did you remove the stick up there? Good boy. <laughs> Uh, he, he's like, oh, yeah, this is the guy who plays Trump. 
sucks. And they're like, no way, can I get autographs or pictures? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your favorite type of vodka? My favorite type of vodka? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, brand. Brand? Yeah. Oh, oh, my favorite brand of vodka. Uh, well, I like Tito's. Yeah! yeah! Tito's is the best vodka. The second best vodka is Dripping Springs. Both of these uh, distilleries are within, I think, 30 miles of each other in Texas. But yeah, mm-hmm. Tito's is Austin, Dripping Springs comes from Dripping Springs, which is just outside of Austin. Yeah, I love that. Love it. But I'm a bourbon person. Bourbon? Yeah. Well, I drink, still drink my vodka, but uh, I like bourbon. I have a lot of bourbon going on in my house right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about my bourbon. I found, I was at a convention in uh, Georgia recently, and I was taught that you can barrel age your own stuff at home. So I bought a barrel and I had a brand, the Eric Vale logo on the front of it. <laughs> and I fill it up with a mix of my favorite bourbons and let it sit there because it ages the bourbon one year for every week it sits in there. So it's been in there for about six weeks now and it's got four more to go and I'm taking it with me on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, do you have a favorite line from any of the things you've worked on? I do not have a favorite line from anything I've worked on. And the, the reason is, is my job is as a voice actor, and an, anime voice acting is the hardest acting I have ever done. I have been in plays, I've been in musicals, I have done film, I have done television, I have done commercials, and I have done other kinds of voiceover, but anime is the hardest. And the reason it's the hardest is because the animation already exists, so you have to match that dialogue to the animation, but it's deadline based. We are on a time crunch on everything we work on all the time. I'm not saying other industries aren't, but the goal is to get the line right the first take, okay? Because if you get it done right the first take, you can move on and get more stuff accomplished, right? Well, I don't get the scripts in advance, and I don't have to memorize my lines. I read them, and I cold read them. So, a lot of the dialogue that you guys hear me doing in a lot of the anime that I've done, especially over the past 10 years, what you're hearing is the, that read is the first time I had ever read those words. Okay? That's it. That's the first time I'd ever read them out loud. So I, they, they scroll it up. They're like, here's your next line. I read it. I'm like, okay. Boom, boom, boom. The tape rolls. I say that. It fits. We move on. I don't remember it, you know? It's really difficult to remember that stuff. And honestly, I don't watch my work because I'm not the kind of person who likes to watch what I've done. You know, I can do it critically. I can watch my performances and things so that I know what to do or not to do next time or what I can improve. (coughs) But entertainment-wise, it's hard for me to watch anime because it feels like I'm at work. It, It feels like I'm always picking things apart. That's the case with anything in the entertainment industry, but because anime is such a big part of my professional life, it's, it's more potent there. So, I'm sorry I don't have a good answer for you. No, that's fine. What? So, <laughs> if you could take any anime you've done and yeah. do a live theatrical uh, version of it, oh, no. which one would you like to do? No. Blue Jinder. Oh. Yes. Blue Jinder would make Starship Troopers look like Gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Gremlins, that movie's amazing. Uh, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I love Blue Jinder. Alright, who else? In the back. You mentioned pets earlier. What pets do you have? I have two children. <laughs> Quinn and Lily, um, but 
the dog is she's very sick right now. Uh, oh, damn. She got pancreatitis. Ooh. Ooh. Which is apparently very painful and very difficult to process through. And um, I actually had to call the doctor the other day. She's at the end of the medication and she's definitely feeling better. Um, but uh, that's three thousand dollars later. Uh, at least she's good. But uh, I had to call the doctor the other day and say this. So this might be ridiculous, but is there some way to stop my dog from farting <laughs> <laughs> all the time? Like for two days, we thought. Somebody had knocked a hard-boiled egg <laughs> under the couch in the front room. Like, why does this smell so... We pulled the house apart, and then we had to test it. I'm like, because the dog sticks to my wife all the time. And then we tested it, and she's like, I still smell it. I'm over here, and I'm like, I don't. It's the dog. <laughs> and, yeah, so, she's gross. <laughs> Catface was not supposed to be our cat. He uh, he was an alley cat, literally. He was this big, Aww. and in the alley. And I'm like, I we already had a cat named Bob. He was my cat in college. He's awesome, right? <laughs> and and I'm allergic to cats, guys. <laughs> so I was like, look, I, I will live with Bob until the end of Bob's days because he was the best. And then after that, I was going to not get cats anymore so I could see what it was like to not feel like shit all the time. But my wife finds cat face in the alley, and there's cat face, super cute. And I'm like, dude, don't bring him inside, and you don't name him. And she was like, fine, fine, I'll just feed him in the alley. So she feeds him in the alley, and every time she called him, she was like, you know, come here, come here, you little cat face. Come here, come here. And then one day, cat face is in my house. <laughs> I'm like, so we just got a cat and cat face, huh? <laughs> I don't make a lot of the decisions in my home. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, what do you guys have a question about? They not ask them, please do. Yeah, it's a healthy question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Slytherin sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? I don't know. Um, I have no idea. As an actor, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any more of anything, just about the talent. Uh, not sure. I really only find out about things when I'm called in. Or when I go to a convention and you guys tell me. I'm not joking. I was at a convention at some point and somebody was like, Hey, Trunks is coming back in Dragon Ball Super. I'm like, really? <laughs> Where I do that. 
they, they gave me and they gave me a full kitchen and said, cook whatever you want, treat it like a cooking show. So I did. So you can watch me cook my favorite dish to cook at home, which is a Thai pasta. It sounds weird, I'm gonna tell you what the key ingredients are. It sounds weird, but do it. All you have to do is take as much cilantro as your blender can fit, about five bunches kind of. I know you're saying that, hold on. Sounds good. Five bunches of cilantro, stick it in the blender, and then throw some peanut butter on top of it. Okay, a little olive oil to get it mixed, and then mix it until it's a sauce, right? And then put everything else in there. Put some ginger and some garlic, some soy sauce, some stuff to flavor it, salt and pepper and all that. And then basically you can use that sauce on anything. You can put it on steak, you can put it on julienne vegetables and pasta and whatever. So we do that a lot of times. Um, and that's what I did on that episode of the One Piece thing. Now, Colleen Klinkenbeer, and on Colleen, plays a movie on One Piece. She is a producer of Funimation, and she put this whole thing together because she knows how much I like to cook. And when I showed up with my stuff, she was like, crap. <laughs> she hates cilantro. Hates it. And she ate her entire steak. <laughs> like, she afterwards, she, she goes, you're a magician. <laughs> She's like, I hate cilantro, and that tasted amazing. So... Good shot. Good shot. So I do that. I cook a whole lot of different things at home. It just depends on what we got, you know. I got that stuff inside. I got a great, uh, we just got a pressure cooker last week, and I haven't tried it out yet, so I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, those are some dishes for you. All right. Yes. Pink. I see pink hair, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier that you didn't have a favorite musical, but did you have a favorite musical that you could have done in the Oh, you know, I, I'm not a fan of, uh, I'm not a fan of musicals like Cats. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like what it is. Oh, I like it. I'm sorry, guys. I just, I just don't care about the French that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That might be um, it's just not my kind of not my kind of thing. I love Chicago. Uh, Chicago's Chicago's my kind of uh, my kind of story. You know, you get some some badass women doing some badass dancing. That's that's awesome. And my wife has has uh, played Roxy, and I got to see that, which was pretty awesome. <laughs> um, so I, I, I like that. I. Begrudgingly like Greece. Um, I don't want to, but I do. Um, Tell me more. <laughs> get out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah, there's, there's no, you can stay in um, That's it. I, I, lately, I find myself watching a lot of the stuff that my daughter watches are musicals. Um, and I, I have always oh, known this to be true, but we did we rewatched this again as a family two three weeks ago, and the Muppet movie, man, the first <laughs> Muppet movie is one of the best movies ever made. So my wife and I have all these conversations at home about perfect <laughs> films. A, a perfect film isn't something that makes no mistakes. A perfect film is something that does exactly what it sets out to do and hits every single note and leaves you completely emotionally satisfied, right? And the Muppet movie is one of those movies, man. You know, I mean, you, you, it's funny, you laugh, you cry, it has cameos from all your favorite people, and, um, and it's just got a good heart, you know? I love that, and the songs are so much fun, so hey, that may be at the top of the list. They should do a stage version of the Muppet movie as a musical. That is Broadway. Get on that, right? Anyway, maybe they have, and I just don't go to New York that much. Uh, all right, well, somebody over here. Yes. Uh, as a voice actor, what's your opinion of Simon Dove's versus like a normal movie? Is it a lot harder or stressful? Oh, uh, uh, Simon Dove's versus a DVD release. Yeah, say. Uh, it is a lot more stressful working on Simon Dove's because you have to get things done, and God forbid you get sick. Um, and, and it crunches down your time. So, while that's the case, uh, I think I prefer the simuldub, the simuldub world, 
that we're in now because there is an immediacy to it. There's, uh, it's, it's closer to something like stage, you know? It's like on stage, I get up and I, like right now, I get up here, I say something, you guys respond, you laugh, you do whatever, and it's that immediate back and forth, right? Well, you work on a film, you don't get to see the audience's reaction for a long, long time. Same with everything else. But with Simuldub and anime, I can find out in a week or less what people think, which also helps to inform my performance because I want to listen to what people are saying. I'm not acting for me, I'm acting for you. So if, if you're like, oh, if a whole bunch of people say, oh, this character's doing this and it should be doing that, well, I can force correct. You know, doesn't happen that often, but periodically it happens. All right, who else? Yes, in back. What is your Patronus? <gasps> oh, my Patronus is a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> a dolphin is a mammal. <laughs> <laughs>
what's your opinion on pineapple on pizza? Oh. 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 It belongs. Yes! yes. 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 Thank you. Mm-hmm. where it feels like it's poking at you, yeah. you know? 
it's like that, and these people start losing their minds. And this one dude, the first book starts with this one guy, older guy, he wakes up in his little cabin he's lived in forever on some mountain in Kentucky, right? And when he wakes up, there's no Kentucky. The world has flooded, and it's flooded up so much that the mountain he lives on is an island in the middle of the ocean. And then the worms start coming out of the ground. And they and it's not like little earthworms. It's like earthworms the size of buses. And they, they just it just chaos and destruction. And in the middle of the book, in the, like you're following these guys and like, holy crap, this is intense. And in the middle of the book, it told like people like, I, these old guys are trying to fight these worms. And then a helicopter flies in from nowhere and crashes on the mountain. And they pull the survivors in. And then the book tells how the survivors got there. And basically, Baltimore was totally flooded. And these guys lived in the top. There was like four buildings that stuck out over the tops of the water. So it's like an ocean with just the tops of buildings. And they don't have a lot of structure because of the ocean. So they're doing this all the time. And over on that building are the guys who have resurrected uh, Behemoth and Leviathan. Oh, wow. And they are sacrificing humans in order to do this. And then here's the normal people going, what are they doing over there? <laughs> and so they fight across the tops of that. Eventually a helicopter comes. And it's so incredibly hopeless and full of despair. And you watch these people losing their minds and they keep going, all of them, keep going, and they do the worst, most horrible things you can imagine. Like, in one, this woman, she just, she's sitting there talking to her best friend, and he's like, he's like, listen, I just wanted to tell you, and she just blows 